Today's podcast is brought to you by T-Mobile. Join the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using hashtag hats off for heroes. When you share your photo or video, T-Mobile will donate $1 to support vets with Team Rubicon. I need to begin with an apology uh, for something serious that happened yesterday. We, as a show, before we get into the fun and the hijinks, apologize uh, that Stu Gotts, during one of the segments, killed Lute Ols- Olson. We yeah. Are, uh, yeah. We, we, and Sorry, Lute. We failed to address that as, as the show went on. We had time to address, hey, my bad, because yeah. Stu Gotts was wandering around the studios saying, hey, guys, I think I killed Lute Olson last segment. <laughs> That's a max fine, right? Well, wait a minute. Do we do this all the time? I know all of us do. There are websites about whether people are still with us or not. Like it, This happens Google. all the time. But in sports, in sports, how often does it happen? Because Lute Olson is a legitimate dead or alive. Oh, no doubt. I, I mean, I said it, and you guys all heard it, and everyone just assumed that I was nobody right wins. Yeah, nobody yeah. wins. <laughs> nobody wins. Nobody came in with a correction. I think also, though, it's because only three people in this room know who Lute Olsen is. <laughs> you know Billy has no idea who we're talking about. No clue. He's 83, it seems. What does he do? He's a yeah. coach? <laughs> so when I, was oh, in, when I was in high school... <laughs> When I was in high school, I remember what? like the Arizona basketball team honoring Olsen as a memorial, and that was in 2001. Memorial. But it couldn't yeah. have been as a memorial. memorial. No, no, no. It was because Lute Olsen's wife had passed away okay. in 2001. So okay. I guess throughout growing up years later, I always just assumed that that was the Lute Olsen memorial. So I didn't <laughs> bat an eye when Sue Gods killed him yesterday. <laughs> right. But Lute's still with us. Yeah. <laughs> Um, who is the person in sports who most represents what it is that we're talking about? It if I nominate right now in an all-in game of dead or alive, you gotta win. You 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 gotta confuse the audience with is this person dead or alive in sports? Because I did this to Frank Layden recently. I killed Frank Layden for no reason. Yeah, he's up there. That was a fifty-dollar fine. Uh, well, yeah, Stu got skated yesterday with not even an apology. Hey, never mind a fine. <laughs> well, I think that's your fine. I don't I, think it's a fine for me. I thought we agreed that the fine is if anyone around here kills anybody, yeah. it's a maximum fine. It's a good yeah. rule. It's a good rule. Billy killed John Fogarty that one time <laughs> a couple of days after he joined the show. Yeah. <laughs> Billy, Billy, what I one of the things I love about you growing up and not growing up is it is a daily blessing to see how ignorant you are about anything that happened before your time. <laughs> I'm gonna I go know, back. No, I live in the moment, Dan. I know, you're, but you're a Mi- you are such the Miami pole vaulter who Miami has been enough all my life. And Lute Olson, who are you talking about? I grew up playing in Flagami, but I have no idea what college basketball is. You are just, this, you know what I'm talking about? This pocket of, of of guys in Kendall who are still the little Cuban kids that they were when they were 12. Yeah, but here's the thing: when I'm your age, I'll be talking about things that are happening now, and it'll, you know, you'll be Lute Olson. No, but you talk about these things like you're 14. You're not 14. <laughs> You've had a decade to consume this stuff, and you weren't consuming it. <laughs> you were just following the Marlins. Well, it's too late to catch up now. I'm going to go back. How am I going to cram 20 years into you? You're know, doing a it week? live on air. No you're one doing- thinks it's going to happen to them. But I'm t- 20 years from now, you'll be talking about Don Mattingly, Billy. I'm telling you, That's you what will I'm be saying. Donnie Tebow. We're going to be like, who's Donnie Tebow? <laughs> no, but Stugatz and I remember specifically what. Don, Ma- Don Mattingly was as a player. You have no recollection of that. <laughs> I mean, I've heard things. <laughs> but 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 really, no. What he was as a player was overrated because he wasn't an OPS guy. He was he was a, more of a slap hitter, but because he played in New York and because he won a batting title. And his nickname was Baseball. <laughs> yeah, Don Mattingly was a player. Don Mattingly was a legitimate uh, sports star in this country. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was, at one time, he was... He may have been the biggest star in New York City at one time. I don't Seriously. think I don't think he ever was because I thought didn't that go more to Winfield? Weren't they playing at the same time and they were like going for batting titles together? And the Yankees weren't really good when Mattingly was there. Uh, no, but the Yankees were still that kind of important because yes. they had just come out. They had come out of that dominant stretch from between the seventies and eighties, and 
Yeah, what that Don Mattingly represented their return to their alleged return to greatness because he was their first, you know, great player of that time. Yeah, the run, but their run, their true return began when he left. They were, I think, he only made the playoffs once. Was he on that team that lost to Seattle? Mattingly is a check. No, but he retired in '95 or after '95. His numbers are okay. He's he had bad. some big OPS years, Dan. Yeah. He had like three or four years where he was north of 900, north of 950. I, I know, but, but, but thirty but career. If you right. look at those OPS numbers, you will see that is not one of the biggest stars in sports. Correct is what I'm saying. This Correct. was not no somebody who was hitting a lot. This was a guy playing in New York as a first baseman who wasn't really a power hitter, even though he sometimes. Hit for power. Yep. 35 homers one year. Uh, Don Mattingly, it's funny that Billy has only a reference for him as a coach <laughs> and a coach who makes him insane. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not just here. It's Dodgers, too. They don't love him over there. I'm just going to tell you right now. I've gotten plenty of people telling me. He's just, he seems like a nice guy. I mean, in all fairness, he seems like a very nice guy. Nice. Yeah. So, you know. But, I, you know. I could have a mean guy coach my team. I don't care if you're nice or mean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Al Golden was nice. Yeah, out of here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Randy Shannon was mean. Out of here. I'm gonna put him in the nice guy Hall of Fame. How about that? Don Mattingly, first ballot. Is he in the baseball Hall of Fame? No, right. Who is in the nice guy Hall of Fame? Like if you go throughout, not just sports, but everywhere. Tim Kirchin. That's oh, yeah. true. Yep. That's true. It's mm-hmm. an excellent one. Tim Kirchin's gonna be in heaven before he dies. I agree with that. He's already there. I, I, he he already, put it on the poll, Guillermo. Is Tim Kirkshin going to be in heaven before he dies? <laughs> um, Tim Kirkshin is so fundamentally decent that it's weird. It's it's hard to explain. Uh, I don't have a lot of people in my life. You don't either, right? Where they just arrive and you know, like they come in with light, and you're like, that person is really kind. <laughs> I don't have many. No. I'm not certain I have any. <laughs> Roy is shaking his head no. So wait a minute. Is Tim Kirkshin the only one in our lives? Like, I'm not talking about Greg Cody arrives here and we all smile um, until he starts coughing and then we start worrying. It's a quick descent from laughter to fear. I think Adnan is in the conversation. Yes, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Brofsky. Ah! Brofsky. <laughs> agreed on Brofsky. A little obscure. Uh, Mike, what are we doing today? I'd like to explain this to the audience. We're chasing. Yeah. We're doing a lot of things today. <laughs> chasing is paramount today. We are chasing all right, Belgium. Where, where, all right, who, we're chasing we're Belgium? We're chasing that Belgium. No. All right, I what, told you, my heart was with France. Ah, oh, that was a tough one. It's a tough one. This is Lukaku. What a bum. Anyways, we are chasing big time. First, entertainment purposes, Inglaterra. We're going with you to advance, okay? You got Harry Kane. It's coming home. But the big one today, oh. the monster, oh. 10 a.m., <laughs> John Isner, Milos Raonic. Really? Oh, yeah. We have... Rocket serves. They're going to both oh, go out there. Smash. They are both going to go out there with equipment tied to their back that puts something on their shoulder that shoots fire or rocket. That is correct. A uh, quick correction there, Mike. It starts at eleven, so oh, you have they... two matches going on right now, and then okay. it starts a half hour after uh, the the finish of one of these. Yeah, matches all the here. flexible schedules yes. in Wimbledon yes. drives me crazy. Yeah. Anyways, eleven a.m. Yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five different entertainment wagers. On that one match. Yep. Wait a minute. So fr- five entertainment props. Five entertainment props. Yeah. I'll give you the easy one right off the bat. USA all the way. We're riding with John Isner. He yep. showed us something against Tsitsipas. It's a different Isner. Different John Isner. Mm-hmm. We have to get Isner on. Do we not from Wimbledon? Let's like, hope yeah. he wins. Yeah, we'll, see how, we'll you, see how today You get him on the phone, his voice is going to sound different because this is a different John Isner. He's probably like a bad boy now. Yeah. It's John Isner. I'm telling you, it jumps off the screen. Totally different guy. He looks, there's something, he's got a glow about him. He really does. Here's the uh, the best part of what we're doing today. We have the over and aces. We don't know we what don't, the number yeah, is. we don't know what the number is. <laughs> no, that can't be right. No, I asked my no, entertainment bookie. don't I, care. I asked my entertainment bookie. I was like, I want the over and aces. I don't want to know the number. That's trust, man. Huh. <laughs> don't want to know the number. It could be It could be a million. Yeah, it could can. be over a million aces in this Milos-John match, and I, I'm taking the over in that. <laughs> because they're just going to be out there smashing. Yeah. So we have the over and aces. Yeah. Over in three and a is half sets. Tennis so easy for Isner uh, just serve and no one returns that we could call him during that match and talk to him 
while he plays because it's just serve. No while reason. he's serving, yes, yes, yes yeah. we can. I mean, yes. the match is going to last eight months, anyways. And Milos Raonic is one another play, one of those he guys. Will play for Milos months. will stay out there, man. Yeah, Milos, he'll Milos. stay out there. With, there are not many people will stay out there for a month with Isner, but this is one of those guys. Uh, there are very few, and he's one of when them. When those two meet, you go to your games and matches, and you go over because they'll play for months. <laughs> Their tennis bags are huge because they pack a tent. They're there for the long haul. He does. It's uh, it's right. It's not a Gatorade water bottle. It's a canteen. Something made for a trip. But here's the, here's the cool thing about it. They'll be in a tiebreaker forever. But it's going to get to the tiebreaker in about eight minutes because no one's that's breaking right. serve. Well, that's right. What's going to happen? Do you have a prop bet on Isner's just going to hit the other guy in the forehead with a rocket serve? <laughs> so here's the greatest. And I, the odds on this for tennis are pretty astronomical. First set goes to tiebreaker minus two fifty. We're on it. Yes, we We're are on it. Yep. And I think it's no going to take about it serve, man. It's going to take about 8 minutes to get right. to that tiebreaker. All right, <laughs> All right let me stop. Now the tiebreaker could take forever. Hold the on. Tiebreaker could take a few days. Yes. All of that was excellent conversation and excellent radio. I appreciate you when I ask you what are we doing today assuming that I was asking you about your gambling habit. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I, so that, that's, that's just par for the course. Right. By well, the way, my, my question the open starts up soon Sue. <laughs> Sorry about that. When I was asking you what are we doing today it's because I know the shipping container is headed out to Jay Wakefield to be a part of one of these soccer events and I want to explain to uh, South Florida what it is that our team are, is doing now in the next stage of our career because this right here where we're sitting right now is the highest we've ever been uh, i know many of you think that for many years many years ago we jumped the shark um but this is the peak right here I'm looking at sugata's face right now i can <laughs> confirm it's the highest he's ever been <laughs> so we're looking down directly at the shark right now well no no i'm just saying we're at the peak of everything we've done this okay. might be jumping the shark right here right now okay with some of the things that we're going to do going forward. But ESPN has now invested in this thing that is certified. And what this thing that is certified, that is, you can make the argument, the biggest sports radio show in America. Um, we've been given a lot of power and sway over Miami. And we've made our careers here. And we're all very grateful that Miami has been a part of who we are. And that at every turn, like, the, you know this, Dugats, when we were going through some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to leave Miami to do stuff out of Miami. I always wanted to bring Miami with me. The, my argument was, no, it's got to be in my city. It's got to be our right. way. It's got to be Miami, Miami, Miami. Mm -hmm. And so when we, you know, when we went to ESPN, we suddenly were the sellout national show. We're not my, we're not Miami anymore. And people got bothered by that. And what I'm telling you is that from here. All the stuff that we're doing that ESPN is going to invest in and ESPN is going to help us with in creating an ESPN, what, what is, what has become an ESPN Miami? Like you've, you've, it's not, it is, it's ESPN Miami is what you've got going on down here. So we're putting together some events. We're doing some things where you can, where we can say thank you to you. And, and, and as the last one we did at Jay Wakefield, so many people saying thank you to us in a way yes. that is sincerely touching. It was because, very moving for no, both of us. I mean, yeah. because, yeah, they're discerning compliments. I, we, we love your compliments so much. Yeah, we we decided, let's again. do more events where That's, people just come up to us and say thank you. Okay, okay. So, and we've got another, one, to, and we've got another yes. one today, correct? Yes, so please come out to Jay Wakefield yes. in the heart of Wynwood at yes. 2 o'clock and kneel before us and say thank you yes. yeah. to me mainly because it's, yes. you know, it's my beer. My beer is yes. getting relaunched today. It's, oh. it's, it's a beautiful cherry limeade sour. It's called the Hang Ten Shot. Yeah. It should have won the last time. No, the keg no, no, kick, no, and uh, nobody could actually I, I order this anymore. Cool. Yet Billy somehow won. I don't know what what's up, man. Put it on the poll, fraudulent champion. What? Hang oh, ten shaka bra, okay. true people's champ. All right, but hold on. So Jay Wakefield was the first one to support any of you know. We brought a zoo out to them on a on a Thursday afternoon. Yep. Just a line of people thanking us. <laughs> it never happens in Miami Thursday <laughs> afternoon. You can't get a crowd of young people anywhere. Except during the NCAA tournament and the World Cup. Yeah, oh, oh, wait. Right, damn. Thursday. I mean, and the interplanetary yeah, uh, soccer thing. Soccer thing. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. and during Ultra. Yeah, that's yeah, true, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So, at 2 o'clock, yeah. uh, an Eastern European country will be facing off against a country that America won a war against. Uh -huh. That's right. Um, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really good one. It's a great match. Right. And I hope a lot of people are taking off work and coming to the heart of Wynwood, yeah. Jay Wakefield Brewery, drinking my beer, 
and thanking me for all the wonderful work that I've done over the last 15 years. Really, you've grown up listening to me, even though I'm still a vibrant, young 32 years right, old. At 2 o'clock, we'll probably be headed into the third set of the Isner match. <laughs> You'll be there, right? No. Well, oh, no! No! What, you know what's... <laughs> you know what's leave an air of mystery. Look, listen, you think I'm going to leave the Isner look, match? Look, listen... Yeah, it's actually, it's no longer a soccer watch party. We are just going to put on Isner and Roundage. Mike, given the spirit of what it is that we're trying to do, okay, how insulted should I be by this? The things that we are saying. August 4th, you could go to levitarbrothers.com. Uh, I could go to levitarbrothers.com on August 4th, no. beginning August 4th. <laughs> That'd be weird to go there that website. time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. listen to me. Regardless, in part of making all of this down here, ESPN Miami, for that Moss event on August 4th, Sedano's flying in. He's on the other side of the country. George this event, Sedano. This George, event, George Sedano. That's right. Miami's own. Miami? But listen, what? as part of ESPN Miami... And as this thing... Well, this is ESPN Fort Lauderdale, isn't it? This is ESPN South Florida. Thank you. ESPN South Florida, broader. Broader in reach. When's brand. ESPN Palm Beach going to have it? <laughs> it's my... Or ESPN Jacksonville. <laughs> Baselli. <laughs> so this thing is closer to him in Fort Lauderdale than anything we've ever done. Because Stugatz keeps, even though Stugatz knows we've been building studios down here for 15 years, yeah. he keeps moving further and further north for some reason. <laughs> so his commute is 90 minutes long. This is closer to your home than anything has ever been. Sedano is going to get there and you're not. Right. Sedano is going to get there from the other side of the country and you're not going to be able to get it from the club. It's still a 90 minute drive for me. I mean. Mike, Appearance is you. Stugatz going to be there with you today? I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to be there right at your side. What's going to happen? Who else Stugatz? is going to be there? Who's coming with me? Dorothy I, Boyd? I, I, uh, Roy's going to be there? I'm going to be there. I canceled a doctor's appointment. I'm risking my life by yes! going today. Right. Yeah, what's going on? Stu? <laughs> Vacation. Hi, everyone. Stugatz here. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumer access dot org number 3030. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Exploring Allison, our weekly look into Allison's soul. I'm G. Lewis Gill, and I'm joined as always by my co-host, M. Ryan Ruiz, and R. Anthony Bellamy. Pleasure to be here. As always, we're joined by Allison Josephine Turner, who's here to answer... All of our pressing questions. Hello, Allison. Thanks I for mean, doing another this. Another would imply that you've done this before. Hello, right? Allison. Thank you. For <laughs> and doing as this always, again. would imply that you've done this before. This is the first of a series of 237 episodes oh where we ins- explore your soul. How was your week? What's with the voice? Why are you doing that? This is how we explore, Allison. What in this creepy this voice? Is how we and what's with the, the music? space? And you're doing it too. We're just exploring. No judgment. Judgment free zone. We're navigators exploring <laughs> Stop. an uncharted territory. Are you ready to begin? Yeah. Allison, what makes you tick? <laughs> what kind of question is that? What makes me tick in terms of what? Pretend you were a clock. No, two I'm not pretending I was a that clock. That would move. No, tick, if you will. not pretending I was a clock. What, what is makes this annoying you voice tick? You're doing? This is an excellent question. This, is it an excellent question? For mapping the topography of your soul. What? M. Ryan said he's mapping the topography of your soul. <laughs> okay. Are you having difficulty hearing? What I am having difficulty hearing with what? the whispering and the whatever creepy music is happening underneath. Just explore the space. Should I meditate? 
All right. Let me it's pose. good for radio. It's good for people listening if we just start to what, meditate. Well, it's good for radio if you... Let me pose the question. question okay, pose the If I'm a clock, if imagine you were I'm a, a clock, clock, I would hope that you would land the plane and this would end very soon. Would you be a digital clock? No. What kind of clock would you be? I wouldn't be a digital clock. No. An alarm it's clock? Like bright and annoying. I don't a like cuckoo clock? <laughs> let him, please let him finish the question. I've never hated a person more. Please let him finish the question. Let's move okay, on. Finish I the feel question. like we're getting stuck on this okay, question. Imagine bogged I was down. a clock. Getting bogged down. Yes, bogged down. <laughs> Next question. Let's make this end. Orange, yellow. I want to go back to what makes me tick. Purple, pink. Blue, magenta, green. Allison Turner, what is your favorite color? I like light colors. Pastel colors. Huh. Is, is that favorite, interesting? Is there a favorite pastel? I can't really hear you, Mike. Is there no, a favorite it's, pastel? It's any light color. Light pink, light purple, light yellow, light orange. So pastel pink? Yes. No. Okay. We'll hold you to that pastel pink. You're writing this this down? is all data that pastel we will pink. revisit We're just data over the course of 237 <laughs> episodes. Just collecting data, exploring Alice. May I ask a question? Yes, sure. you may. Are you a honker? Do I in my car? No, I never use the horn. Never. Do you? My grandfather at, taught me don't ever use the horn. I do you ever horn. yell at other drivers? Do I yell at other drivers? In your car by Sometimes. yourself? Yeah. Really cracking you open. If you have any questions for Allison, 786-456-4837, or you could also text us at 67974 and help us explore Allison. Billy, imagine you were a clock. What kind of clock would you be? I would be. Would you be a diddle, digital clock? We're not exploring me. It's okay. exploring <laughs> Allison. I'm sorry. I digress. All right. Let's ask another question. Okay. If you had unlimited funds and you had to go on a two-week holiday, where would you go? I mean, why do you call it holiday? Vacation? You had unlimited funds for this two-week holiday. I would go Where to Italy. You? Italy. Yes. What part of Italy? What would you do? Uh, under the Tuscan sun. Yeah, that sounds good. We've gone from exploring Alice into exploring what is this Italy. What Why are you guys doing this super creepy Let's voice? Let's explore Italy with I Alison. also can't really hear you. Do you like Diane Lane? Oh. I do. I do. What a yeah, question. I do. My colleague, our Anthony Bellamy, has a question. Ah. Have, have you ever used a dating site or app? No. Might you be interested in doing so? No. You've closed the book on the dating apps. Yes. Super creepy. Interesting. Interesting, yes. Interesting data. Just, just data. We're going More data. Okay. Do you say data or data? Data. data? data. Interesting data we've collected here so far. By the way, we are going to need a cotton swab of your saliva. Pastel pink data was her data? favorite color. Oh my god. <laughs> Just collecting. So Tuscany. Annoying. Do just not forget Tuscany. Data. Okay, collect your data. Let's go out to a caller. Let's go to line one where Phil has a question for Allison. Phil, would you like to explore Allison with us? Yeah, hey, Allison, it's Phil. Hi, Phil. Phil, your voice is a little too hard. Use your inside voice. Oh, oh, sorry, guys. Sorry. So, quick question for you, Allison. If you were getting attacked by an animal in the wilderness, what do you think would be the most brutal animal? I personally think mountain lion because they're so cute and you want to pet them, but they're dangerous. But then you also never know a bear might get you too. Phil, Phil, you calm would never down. find me in the wilderness. Why not? Because I would just—I'm not interested in being in the wilderness, so I would never be there. Not a camper. Thank you so much, Phil, for your question. Oops. You don't have to yell next time. Yes, calm down, Phil. We're just exploring together. Allison, here's a question from the texters. What is your favorite episode of Curbed? Oh, the um, the Wire. It's my favorite episode. Interesting. Do you that, agree that it's not TV? It's HBO. Just data. It's not TV. Do you it's agree HBO? that it's not TV? It's HBO. The I don't wire. understand what you're saying. <laughs> Do you agree episode. it's not TV? It's HBO. Curbed. I don't know what you're saying. Do you agree it's not TV? It's HBO. I don't know what you're saying. Saying. It's not TV, it's I don't know. It's HBO. I don't have no idea what you're saying. So you agree? It's I, I, interesting. I disagree. Write right down. Just to just, make this end. We're just exploring, Allison, collecting data. <laughs> Line three, we have a caller, David. David, what is your question for Allison? David, hello? Hi. Um, what's the weirdest thing that Dan asked you to do for him? David, David. 
ask it, please. I, the please, weirdest please, thing please, is inside the voice, David. You were intense. You couldn't hear the Saturday question because you were yelling so loud. And my and ears are bleeding from how loud he asked that question. My goodness, David. David, re ask the question if you're there. David? 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 And low sodium soup to live yeah, hot. Hello. The All right, much better. Hello. Now. I can hear him now. Hello, Alex. Yes. Why? Why is it that you want to kill to God? I mean, do you listen to the show? Is that true? Do you want to kill him? It's faintly different than the original question. He yelled at us. What was the first question? I couldn't hear the first. I I made out the craziest, craziest thong Dan made you do, or the craziest thing. Something about Dan. Craziest thing Dan made you do. Thank you, David. Allison. Allison, you have the floor. I have the floor? For what? Allison, I have a question for you. Why are you? I mean, this is what you're asking me? Why are you? We're just collecting data. Well, why Allison, are you what? You don't have to, you don't have to raise your voice. Allison, it's a just weird imagine, that question. Together. Imagine, why you're, are you an what? imagine okay, you're an imagine ocean. Imagine you're an ocean. Uncharted. Jacques are you guys Cousteau, anywhere near this ocean? Because Jacques Cousteau a lot more has never seen this ocean. Who? We have a Jacques Cousteau. sea submarine that is mapping the bottom of the ocean. This is uncharted territory. Okay. Why are you? Why am I? I mean. When are you? I'm never. How are you? I'm you can actually answer so that one. done with this segment. What's your favorite meal? Breakfast. Ooh, what's your daily breakfast routine? I, a nice coffee. I'd like for you, if you can, to walk me through a day in the life of Allison. Yeah. We're not doing that. Okay, what time do you go to bed then? I have insomnia, so that doesn't happen. Usually. What time Usually do you Usually I don't go to bed. I mean, it's just the... Is there a usual time you start trying? Let's go out to Tom on line five. Tom, do you have a question for Allison? Yes, Allison? Yes. Tom, how, Tom, Tom, too how, loud. We can't hear you. Uh, yes, Allison, how much do you drink every day because you have to work with these morons? Oh, I, I, I lost that. I didn't hear that, that one. one. I... I the call seemed to have gotten catch, disconnected. Yeah, he was peeking Missed through my board. I'm sorry. Lyle. Our Anthony, can you please tell them that these Lyle. are yes. inside voices? Our Anthony, please let them know. know that they're yelling and we can't really hear what's going on. I'm just trying to explore. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all. It's okay, our Anthony. It's okay. This Lyle's is... on line six. He has a question. Ooh, Lyle. Lyle. I love that name, Lyle. Lyle. <laughs> Allison. Are you a cat or a dog person? Oh God, I hate cats, so I'm definitely not a cat person. You hate cats? I do. Interesting what a data. Voice by Lyle, what a name. The, are you getting the same data that I'm getting? I'm collecting so much data today. The Wire was her favorite episode of Curve. She agrees that it's not TV, it's HBO. Pastel Pink was her favorite. Well, all pastels. All pastels. Yeah, all pastel. I'm come close to saying Pastel Pink. That was absolutely what you did. No. Allison, are you done with that saliva swab? I'm done with this segment. Let's ask done? one final question okay. before we go for this week. Do you, before we get to it, do you feel as though this has been productive thus no, far? I don't. Uh, I feel like you've been super annoyed. That doesn't count as his final question. That was not my final question. Okay. What was your question, question before my final question? I'm going to get to my final question now, if you allow me to get there. Do you allow me to get to the final question? Get to the question. Do I have your permission to get to the I, final yes, question? None of yes, this is the, plane. the final question. This is not the final question, yet we're getting to the final question. Are you ready? No. Not the final question. How can we get you ready for the final question? <laughs> what can I do to make you comfortable to receive this final you question? Stop talking. Are you but ready? he can't ask you the question if you stop talking. It's very difficult to ask questions if I'm not talking. Okay. Are you ready for the final question? Yes. Yes, Billy. Allison, what... G. Lewis Gill. That's my name. G. Lewis Gill. <laughs> Allison, what is your deepest, darkest secret? Take a moment if you need one. I I remember, never we're mapping you the more. topography of your soul. Why are you? I've when? never hated you more. You're deflecting. I'm deepest, not deflecting. I'm the, being the, the honest. That's my deepest, darkest dark, dark secret. secret. I've what never hated you more. Deepest, darkest secret. I think that's about all the time we have this week for exploring Allison. Please join us next Wednesday or Thursday or never again when we go into the deep, dark soul of Allison Turner. David Sampson next. This is your bedroom. This is your bedroom. 
with Blue Chew. Blue Chew uses the same active ingredients as in Viagra or Cialis, but now comes in chewable form. Chewable means better, cheaper, and works faster than pills. No in-person doctor visit, no waiting in line, no more awkwardness. 100% online at bluechew.com where your first order is free. Just pay $5 shipping. Use promo code DAN at bluechew.com and restart the party. This is a recurring theme around here with this show. Samson. David Sampson is going to review movies for us. If you've got any calls for him, the former Marlins executive, uh, 786-456-4837. He's discovered TV, which is amazing because right. he keeps texting me about uh, about the show Billions. He's, uh, he's now binge-watching, but he's been also spending much of his free time now just making fun of me because this show has no reach <laughs> and only has roar. Guillermo, you want to take up this conversation with David Sampson? Sampson, go ahead and laugh at, at Guillermo, at me, and our show right now as it came to our Lewis Brinson campaign. I've lost my voice from laughing so much. <laughs> but, David, it was because he got injured that he wasn't selected onto the team. It was an unfortunate timing. He hit the DL. So, I mean, they're not going to waste the spot and just select him, you know? as opposed to the other 20 injured guys who were put on the team and then replaced. You're totally right. Thank you. <laughs> That's a win for you. Yeah, I, all right. Way to go, Bill. Uh, so, you, so we're back to you are reach now because, oh, wow, you, so you concede, Samson, that uh, the show does have reach. I got a text from someone at the Players Union who said that Lewis Brinson missed out on the top 15 by 420,000 votes. So I thought that was an amazing job by you guys. No, we got scrubbed out. True. We got scrubbed out. I hope it is true, but we got scrubbed out. Like, because the only way it could be true, given just how many times Guillermo himself was voting every day, the only, <laughs> the only way it could be true is if this is a scandal in which our votes were crushed. I think, have you guys been voting for Muncie in the final vote? Did you take up his cause? No. Why? Because that would have too likelihood a chance of actually showing whether I'm right or you're right. Is that what I, you mean? I see. Why would we vote for him? Why, why would, who of those final votes would you vote for? Why wouldn't you vote for Aguilar? He should have been on the ballot. I want Aguilar. With. He's deserving, but I'm merely trying to show that your show getting behind someone should be enough to get him over the edge. It wasn't enough for Brinson because of obviously there's a conspiracy, of course, but the final vote, there's no conspiracy. It's only a three-day uh, sprint instead of a marathon, and that's when reach really does matter. 786-456-4837 if you want to call into the show just with braying laughter at how the world's most powerful sports radio show <laughs> can't get Lewis Brinson. <laughs> Don't laugh at us that way, Samson, until I'm done and give you permission to oh, Just under a half million. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> how many votes? I Can we actually get to the – I would love to, to have an investigation into how many votes we actually got because that, – That information is available. Okay, so you're telling me that those, there are documents, there's somewhere somewhere in baseball I could get that information. You just need to get Axelrod's friend Hall to help you. 786-456-4837 is the telephone number. Let's do some journalism. Somebody out there, do it for us, because I know Guillermo's not going to do it. When I say I'm calling from the Dan Lebetard show, that's going to be out of that conversation. Well, you don't call and say that. That's correct. Which is why you don't say that. <laughs> that I mean, have you learned nothing, yes, man? There he is, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> at the peak of the ed- executive ladder, Guillermo Gill. <laughs> um, if, uh, all right, Samson, what are you reviewing for us this week? I'm reviewing a documentary called Love Means Zero. It's the story of Nick Volatari, and he is now an 86-year-old man living in Florida, He's barely recognizable because we remember him from the sidelines as Agassiz's coach and Carlene Bassett's coach and Becker's coach. And it's the story of what he gave up and what he did to raise tennis champions. And it was personal to me because I went to the Nick Bolletieri Academy and I was one of the only guys who almost got kicked out. The only time I ever got to see Bolletieri personally is when I got caught in the girls' dorm with Annie Lennox's doppelganger named Susan Lynch. And he said to me that I'm the least serious tennis player in the entire camp. And I thanked him for that because it was totally true. And he had me run suicide sprints on the court for an hour and a half straight. 
and I'll never forget it. It was insane. All we wanted was Nick's love. And this documentary is about that. It's about all these players. It's like a cult. And he is unapologetic. He's leathery. And he is in the midst of a major falling out with Andre Agassi, who would not sit for the documentary. The only former player who wouldn't sit. And it's the story of what it takes to be a champion. If you're going to be the best, you have to make some enemies along the way, and you have to do what you think is right and be unapologetic. And that is Nick Boateri. It's a documentary worth seeing, even if you're not a tennis player. I loved one word of all those words you said, and it was combining unapologetic with leathery. Those are like I'm okay. <laughs> leathery, I'm not, I know, but I'm generally wow. I'm generally okay with unapologetic until you make it leathery, and then I'm like, you know what? I no. No, like leathery, it's leathery is some of the stuff we were talking about yesterday with boy bands in Perlman, right? No, but leathery no. is also no, a no, 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 it's a no, texture. no, yeah, texture, yeah, texture, right? No, leathery. I'm not saying lechery, I'm saying leathery, uh, <laughs> I'm, I, no, it comes from leather. I, I'm <laughs> saying that Perlman's word. skin is doing, leathery yeah, exactly. as well, is it yeah, not? Yeah, That's well, no, he doesn't ask him, he's no longer with us, okay, okay, very good, cow hide, you know. Yeah. Um, so what did you, how did the movie end up making you feel like, did it, cause you say unapologetic about how you get to be a champion, but Agassi not sitting for it. Agassi's biography, autobiography is one of the, no biography is one of the most amazing things I've ever read. Why do you imagine he wouldn't sit down for that? Because he's still so hurt by what Balateri did. Balateri dropped him as a player by letter. And he actually found out from someone other than Balateri and Balateri was his father my father figure, if not his father. And it's just the story of a broken family and a father who just doesn't realize sort of the wake that he's created. And then once he realizes it at an old age, he's still unapologetic about it because he believes that he made Agassiz's career. And it's likely that he did. He's that good a coach. And how I felt after was realizing that sometimes there's a price you pay for greatness. And in order to be great, you have to be willing to pay that price. And some people just say they are, but they're not. And that's when mediocrity creeps in. I wonder, though, is it worth it, right? Because that's the competitive nature. But what you're really talking about here is an absence of love, right? That, that whatever he was doing, that he was pushing the athletes toward ambition, and they were seeking love. And those are two very different things. But it was love in his way. And that's really the double entendre of the, of the show. Love means zero, meaning love doesn't matter and tennis love obviously is a score, but I think that love takes on many different shapes and forms. Boletary loved his players, but he loved them in a way that, that absolutely was blinding as it relates to ambition and winning and money. And he's, again, if that's your goal, then he succeeded. And he admits at 86 that he succeeded, but then the whole documentary gets ruined by his last line. And I feel like I don't want to spoil the last alert. line of the documentary. Spoiler, spoiler whoa, 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 alert! Spoiler whoa, 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 whoa. Alert! I'm not going to. I'm not going to say it because it's not an old movie. But the last line is very, very telling, and it changes the entire outlook of him as a man. David, how good were you at tennis? Because you go to him, you go to that camp. You have to be pretty good and pretty serious about it. So I, it was really just that my divorced parents wouldn't, didn't want me around for a summer, right. uh, any summer. So uh, I was good enough to be accepted, <laughs> but not good enough to be competitive. So I used humor and deception and, and flirtation to make it through the summer. But it was brutal. It's all-day tennis. Uh, Nick Bolateri, it's truly what, it, what you imagine it to be. It was insane, and it's full of kids, all of whom had been told by their parents that they were or going to be the best, and all my parents said is just don't be around because we don't want you around. So I had fun, but again, I'm the guy who had fun in law school, so I always had fun, and uh, there were a lot of kids there not having fun. So that's where it all started, huh? In, in more ways than you know, Stu Gatz. I mean, when he goes to deep dive on divorced parents who didn't want me around one summer or any summer, that explains everything that's before you today. You right? have no idea how deep that statement actually is. No, I do, though. I do. I feel like you just dropped that there in the middle of everything. I was a divorced parent that my parents did not want around. That explains a lot about, like, everything that happened with you here in Miami and just the way that you're perceived and everything. Um, nothing is by accident, I would say. <laughs> uh, all right, man. We're, uh, we're going to get out of here. We'll talk to you next week. Hey, take care, guys. Thank you. See you, Bye. Dave.
<laughs> what happened, Mike? It was a clunky uh, end to that interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, men? All right. That was weird. I all said right, all right, man. Oh, you all said right, man? Mike. Either way, it's still weird. Big hug. All right, Mike. All right, man. Love Bye. You. <laughs> Love you. This is how it ages. <laughs> Let it descend into the sewage Do it with dignity, please. Oh, they won't. Is this dignified? <laughs> really? Oh. I need you to I need you to be with it for at least four more years. Yeah. <laughs> but do you inside. though? I walked inside this morning. You had sunglasses on. I know. Well, well, now we have to make this at something. We have to turn this into something. My rapid descent into just old age now. <laughs> or lunacy. Uh, yeah, one or the other. Come see it today at Jake Wakefield. Stare at the scene. And thank him. You look him in the eyes when you th- actually don't look him in the eyes, but just on your knee, general direction, thank him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Never look in by. the eyes. Walk on by. <laughs> Mike, I know it's your beer, but you're going to keep everyone away from me, right? Of course. <laughs> per use. By decree. I might add. That part hasn't changed. That part will never never change. Never, never change. No. Get away from the casket. Get away. <laughs> You're going to have the velvet rope around the casket. You're gonna... I'm sorry. He really has to go. But he's he's dead in a casket. Yeah, I'll, no, I'll, I'll be, can't really, talk right can't now. Talk I'll be right warmer now. So to swamp. people in that casket than I will be at Jay Wakefield. It's been a long day for Dan. Yeah. It's been a really long day for him. Yeah, He's sorry. dead in the casket. I can see yeah. him right there. He actually, he actually has an appointment. Rough He's, HQ today. Yeah, yeah. Long day of filming. Yeah. I mean, Very really long day. He's normally not like normally, this. Normally he's not. Normally he would do it for you. He yeah. absolutely would. Yeah. Oh, he loves yeah. the fans. Yeah, loves yeah. You think someone will ask you about the dolphins at your funeral? <laughs> <laughs> the yes. reason why he's in the cast. It's, it's, it's <laughs> how I'm going to tumble into the... Into <laughs> Who are the dolphins going to draft? <laughs> I'm sorry. He would love to join your radio show in Albuquerque. He just does not have the time. <laughs> sorry, Daniel. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> it is. It is. It's going to send me careening into the casket. Hey, Dan, why did the dolphins go 6 and 10 last year? Uh, he would love to preview the Steelers Dolphins, but he he's he's he has a flight. He has a flight doing important work. Journalism. Have you heard of it? He's good at it. He's a writer. I'm a squeaky toy, and I've got one job, getting chomped on by this little ankle sniffer. So pardon me for feeling inept compared to Geico, who does so much more. Like, while I'm getting slobbered on, Geico is creating cool technology like their mobile app, which lets people pay their bills or file a claim. Plus, Geico is the fastest-growing auto insurer for the last 10 years. Is it too much for me to ask for one more feature? Fast and friendly claim service like Geico, maybe? Oh, great. I'm getting buried again. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more.